Welcome to Electro Online. Well, we've been talking about how difficult it is to land on Mars, so here you have an example of what had to happen just the right way, in the right sequence, at the right time, for the Viking landers to land safely on the surface of Mars. So they come in, and first what they do is they enter orbit, so they have what we call the, the main uh, orbiter right here, which is attached to the lander. And so they get into an orbit around Mars, and in this case the orbit was at about 300 kilometers, about 190 miles up. And they go into a coasting mode. They wait until they're at the right location so that when they start detaching the lander and they start the landing process, the lander will end up in the right place. The lander is encapsulated by both the heat shield at the bottom and the aeroshell cover at the top. They have that cover there because it's traveling at a very high speed and it needs to come through the atmosphere at high speeds. It, it starts feeling enormous resistive forces and that has to be channeled around the lander in the right way. You don't want to go into a tumbling mode, so you want to make sure that aerodynamically you come in in the right way. So that's very carefully encapsulated and the lander is all folded up, the legs are folded up, everything is folded up in as small a package as possible for the voyage. So they start entering, uh, they start the landing phase, and they do that when they're moving at about five kilometers per second, which is 11,000 miles per hour. So the lander is moving 11,000 miles per hour in kind of a coasting mode. And when they're at the right location, they then what they do, they, they fire the retro rockets so just a little bit to start descending. And they do that by slowing the, uh, slowing the lander down a little bit so instead of going around orbit the lander begins the landing process begins to uh, start on a path to the surface of the planet at a height of about 244 kilometers which is about you know 50 60 kilometers below where the orbiter is orbiting around the planet they begin to feel the resistance of the atmosphere. You eventually begin to enter the atmosphere. Now remember, the atmosphere of Mars is very tenuous, it's not very thick, and at that height, it's just barely there, but you begin to feel some resistive forces, and the heat shield is beginning to work, things are beginning to heat up, and that process, as you go farther and farther down, the greater pressure uh, and the pushback from the um, from the atmosphere begins to slow down the lander till eventually a height is reached of about 5,800 meters. So they, they're in a free fall and just moving at very high speeds. But by the time they get to a height of about 19,000 feet, about 5,800 uh, 5, meters, they deploy the chute because at that point the speed is still 900 kilometers per hour or 50, 560 miles per hour. So if they didn't have a chute to slow down, they would slam into the surface of Mars and of course be completely destroyed. And at a height of 19,000 feet, at a speed of 560 miles per hour, it wouldn't take very many seconds to crash land on the surface. So they, they begin to fire the, uh, the retro, oh no, now at this point they, they deploy the chute, and eight seconds after the chute is deployed, so they want to make sure that that process went well, the chute is up, it's slowing down. At that point, they have to jetten the heat shield because they want to lighten the weight, and they want to expose the legs, of course, so they can do a landing. Eight seconds after that, they do extend the legs, and they get the, the lander in an extended lake position so they can go ahead and land on the surface correctly. Then 45 seconds after the chute is deployed, they're now at a height of about 1,500 meters. That's less than a mile, about 5,000 feet above the surface. And at that point, they're still moving at 134 miles per hour or 215 kilometers per hour, still way too fast. So the chute wasn't able to slow them down anymore because the air, the, the atmosphere of Mars is so thin that it only can slow them down so much. So for the, then they were about 45 seconds away from landing, still moving at 134 miles per hour. Then they use the retro rockets of the lander to slow it down over the next 45 seconds. And by the time they reach the surface, they slow down to about eight kilometers per hour, about five miles per hour, and do a landing at five miles per hour. There's a bit of a bounce, there's a bit of a shock, but 
it's not sufficiently great and that g-forces are such that nothing on the spacecraft on the lander is damaged so that's the whole idea that's usually the problem with the landing on mars is if you can't slow down sufficiently and you hit the surface too hard you get too much of a jar when you hit the surface and things can break and things don't work presumably a number of the landers of the soviet union that they they attempted to land earlier in earlier years probably had that fate where they just came in too hard at too high a speed and the jarring motion of that landing probably broke a lot of the components and they weren't able to then do their their purpose once they reached the surface so that's how Viking 1 landed Viking 2 of course was an exact twin and land in the exact same way just at a different location but you can see the well, whole process. we're back we just had a power outage all the lights went out the camera went off so we weren't quite sure where we ended, but I think we were pretty close to the end of this video where we're just kind of explaining how there were so many things that had to happen at the just the right amount of time, at the right time I should say, and for the right duration of time for the spacecraft to come down and the lander to have that soft landing. A lot of landings do not go this well, and that's why the Viking landings were such a success. Both of them successfully landed in such a way that they were able to conduct their experiments for years after the landing. So it was just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, a lot of landers are not that fortunate as they come in too hard at too high a speed. They get that enormous jarring. And because of that jarring, something breaks, the circuit boards break, whatever might break connections so that it no longer works. And once it's no longer working, it's basically a piece of junk in the junkyard on the surface of Mars. So kudos to the Viking uh, spacecraft and kudos to the people who put it together and who operated it. So that is the, Vac the Viking landing and of course both Vikings 1 and 2 were exactly the same. And now we'll get into the details of the experiments that they performed in order to, 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 to determine whether or not life existed on Mars or not, or if life still exists on Mars. And those are some very interesting experiments with some very interesting results.